Hey guys, today I will be checking out chapter 11, which has been recently translated. We have a half stamina campaign, so I kind of want to do this as fast as possible so that I can actually take advantage of the half stamina stuff or the frequency that I would be unlocking uh, after chapter 11. I believe it's chapter 11. Yeah, it should be chapter 11. Anyways, let's just jump right into it. Individual resolve 1. So where we last left off with the main scenario quest, where we last left off, we snuck into the Warmonger's base, then we did a bunch of stuff, and then we escaped, and I believe the Nereum base exploded. Stuff happened. Go check it out. I suppose I should introduce myself, Harrison. You may call me Makahal, the world representative of Divaloka. His tone is level, kind, and full of compassion. The voice embodies everything you know of Mr. Mononobe. I am an ally of Tiskalipoka and the others against whom you were just fighting. Mm, do you see? I too desire a ruinous war which lives in unscathed. This man foolishly discarded his sacred artifact and handed over his rule. Now, he is nothing more than a hollow shell. Nothing more but memories was now to house him. Think of him as a ghost. One who will never be able to leave a battle zone. And even more foolishly, he erased every trace of his existence beforehand. Oh, that foolish, destructive honesty is precisely what I adore in him. Once the next loop begins, this man will be completely erased from this Tokyo. Oh, how wonderful. An end in which everything is destroyed. That is what I wish for. For it is only in complete destruction that the world's salvation can be found. This Katli Poko had always lacked ambition. He strove for an eternal war, but he should have wished for a final one. A grand war that leaves nothing standing, that destroys even the memories that span across loops. All will begin with the first Yuga, and all will end with the last. I shall ensure it. Upon the name of Maka Mahakala, I vow to remake everything from scratch. Creation, preservation, and destruction. I will repeat the cycle as many times as need be. For my wish is that no one may ever break out of this cycle. How unfortunate. I fear you leave me no option other than war. It was inevitable. I have known from the beginning that there could be no peace between us. Woo! Fancy background. Uh, that is the Ikebukuru dungeon background. <laughs> Mahakala. The world representative of the Diva Loka, you say? Ah, indeed. According to Arthur. The encounter took place deep within Penitentia Academy. What's more, our home teacher, Miss Mononobe, was abducted and then ultimately disappeared altogether. Hmm. Is there a problem, Snow? Do you doubt this account? I do not, per se, doubt it. But I must say I find it rather baffling to hear that Mah Hakala essentially claimed the mantle of the All Destroyer. Uh, the what now? Even the claim that Mahakala is the world representative of Divaloka strikes me as peculiar. Uh, all Destroyer. Claim, Snow. Could be that you haven't encountered this Mahakala before. You yes, guessed correctly. As it happens, the name Mahakala is a little nostalgic, as in my home world of. Hmm? Hmm? It would seem that the reconnaissance team has returned. Let us resume this conversation later, Shiro. Oi! We're back, Shiro! Hey, Snow! You can bet your kettle I kept my partner nice and safe. Hey, missed you, Shiro. Uh, we're recording Trichy. Well, but my friends, Master Claude is presently occupied with other business, I'm afraid. As such, I'll only to extend you to the warmest of welcomes in my master's stead. For as he keeps you in the highest esteem, it is with the utmost pride that I observe your safe return. 
So accordingly, um, we should be in... Uh, this seems to ta have taken place after the Ikebukuro uh, ca dungeon underground uh, beneath uh, the Ikebukuro Coliseum uh, has been explored. And that story scenario takes place in the, in the dungeon quests, which are still not translated. Like, seriously, come on, Life Hunters. The, the one for uh, Shinjuku's library also hasn't been translated, which is, like, less relevant to the story, I believe. But supposedly the one direct uh, for the Ikebukuro dungeon is actually more ingrained with the actual story we're seeing right now. By the way, uh, FYI, the reason why they are going there is because they, they house the memories of past loops. And uh, they're, they're hoping to find some clue to their advantage against the big three guilds and to I, i'm not entirely sure what their end goal is besides it seems like they want to escape this uh series of loops that are happening how did it all go were able to meet with the target took away in the depths of the ikabuka labyrinth an unsanctioned existence here in this tokyo an exception so i guess it's a store a very exception in fact who wants own kengo's sacred artifact i trust you were able to make contact Ah, oh, come on! Can't you tell from the look of, on these mugs? You tell them, partner. <laughs> yep, looks like uh, this takes place in the story, right after you reach the 10th floor. Ah, uh, well, we pulled off somehow. Guess we got what we needed. Maybe. Even I have no idea what it is. I knew you could do that with them. I hope the Kangaroo didn't hold you back. I admit I was worried about sending you two off together. <laughs> the hell's that supposed to mean? My partner here would have been toast without me. Mmm. Can go save me from being buttered. Right? You hear that, Shudo? Marathon gets it. Mmm. My apologies for the interruption, but I have an important announcement. It appears there have been developments above ground. Those world representatives who call themselves guildmasters of the three true guilds appear to have re revoked a ceasefire. <laughs> okay, that's... <laughs> okay, so now they're in war. That's interesting. The southern and eastern forces have resumed their advance, while the warmongers to the west have moved to intercept them. It is most likely that the collision of these forces will take place either here in Ikebukuro or in Shinjuku's Kabukicho. <laughs> As if we could just let them use their trip to settle their scores. Cool it, Kengo. Snow, what kind of numbers are we looking at? Hmm, setting aside the likelihood of Reen's forfeits. I estimate each of the three factions to be over 10,000 soldiers strong. 10? What? Oh, don't mind, just all range charge them all. Are you serious? 10,000? How'd they manage that? Mm, even if you consider the members they poach from Aoyama Guild and a variety of other plausible avenues, the numbers just don't add up. They must have a, some sort of ace up their sleeve. In fact, we should expect that this is not the true extent of their forces. We can confirm various independent cells on move in Chuo Ward to the east of Setagaya Ward to the, the south. We also know that several large-scale public works were suddenly set in motion to build new structures, including walls and roads. These project souls was to facilitate the advance of the armies. Uh, they're even controlling public construction services. Snow, so, could it be that the rumors are true? I've heard snatches of such things from Ryota, Koji, and Hanuman, but I was hoping they are false. What's going on, Snow? There are signs that the three true guilds have taken root within the halls of the three powers of government, legislative, executive, and judicial. In anticipation of the fast approaching day when transients will outnumber the local citizens, they are working to extend their hold over the government. Additionally, they have among they have among themselves with a near monopoly on memories of previous loops, who guide them to act with optimal efficiency. Hmm. It is evident that the three true guilds are focused only on one or another and do not consider any other guilds to be a threat. To them, these minor guilds are simply victims in the grand scheme of the real war. And well, the three true guilds have given us no reason to doubt these rumors as yet. Mm, 
Whoa, what the heck? Where did all these soldiers come from? What's going on in the city? Ooh, pretty. In Hikari Gaoka, Narian Ward, the warmonger's portal rests with an enormous fortress. Erected rapidly prior to the current war, the fortress towers threateningly above its surroundings. Mm, this will do. Let me down. Thank you for providing security, warmongers. Please inform your good masters that the leader of the rule makers require a word. Hmm. So then more about just some communication planning. Ah, yeesh. Here we go again, repeating ourselves. I wonder how many more times I'll have to see these events through. Hello, 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 hello! Allow me to bid you doubly welcome to the Warmongers portal. It's always been a pleasure to see our dear instigator of instruction, our plan C. C for Curran. Okay, so D is duo, C is Curran, B is break. I have no idea what plan A is. It must have having a long journey from the portal of the rule makers to the far east. All that trouble for little me, you shouldn't have. Why, if you, I were a computer, I'm sure this joy would make my eyes bright as camera flashes. <sighs> Nothing, not even a smile, a chuckle. Plan B, Robert. Oh, what? Bertro. Plan B is Bertro? I thought it was break. Well, I don't know. Maybe they're related to each other. I find your humor so unamusing that I could not even pretend to laugh. <laughs> uh, now you've done it. Robert! Robert! You lot are the only ones who still can call me that, you know? Robert, 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 Battle! 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 And how I call you by your old name, eh? What do you say to that? Charles. This reminds me of our current days back at the academy. When we are top of the class. Robert, Charles, and Isaac. Would Isaac be duo? Hmm. But now those names and memories have passed to the extremities of time beyond the dwarves into summer. Need I point out that rehashing such memories is unpleasant? <laughs> My bad! Repetition is the basis of humor, though, and retorts is the basis of anecdotal humor. Anyway, anyway, mind coming to the chase? I know you didn't come all this way just to chat about comedy. Obviously. I came to check on how you're doing, and... I also want to share in person what I know about the world representative vacancies that have come up. I have so co far confirmed that there are three. Surger, Azathoth, and... Tiscatli Poka. However, is Tescapoli Poker dead? <laughs> okay, I guess uh, that makes sense. I have seen a lot of memes of the Genociders being dead and of uh, Shino being dead, but not of Tescapoli Poker. So I guess that's one nice thing I've been spoiled by. However, this is still within the parameters of our plan. The sacred artifacts of these three have been inherited by the fragment of the voracious wolf. Break. For a fleeting moment, the eyes of the young girl I dr uh, drift across to the wolf machine upon which the boy... Or uh, before her sits. So long as the one who gave you that mechanical body, the one known as Break, continues to exist, the loops will continue. Well, it's time to kill Break. A good system never ceases to function even when one of its parts is missing or replaced. <laughs> Sounds good to me. That way, this one goes on forever, right? Seated astride his mechanical wolf, the boy smiles contentedly as he watches his army stream forth from the fortress, a magnificent sight to behold. Our job is simply to watch over the recurring loops here in Tokyo. We have no business meddling in the eventualities of victory or defeat. Nor is there any reason for us to actively enjoy the process. I trust that you are aware of this. <laughs> it's not intentional, I assure you. Now, 
Do you know why humor is like war? Because both escalate the more they repeat. And the more they escalate, the more exciting things get. That's just the way of the world. <laughs> mm. huh, so, let's all hope this war will be just as entertaining as the last. <laughs> Hello? Ryoten Hanuman here. Shirenko, can you hear us? We're live from the Aoyama Guild Tactory. This is so cool! I feel like I'm a real ninja on Skyrim mission. Aren't you a real ninja already? A whole bunch of transients are passing through here. Heading for Toshima Tush Ward. Anything on your end, Toji? This is Toji. We have also confirmed that a large force of transients is passing through Matra Ward through Shinjuku. Which forces? Okay, they didn't say. They are paying no mind to us, nor the t to the tycoons. I am inclined to believe that their target is the warmongers as suspected. We'll keep up the surveillance. Also, if I may ask, how does the f filial one fare? I've heard that the battle at Penitentia was fierce. Thank you, Tadotomo. As for your concerns, Moritaka needed to recover his strength, and so is currently working in tandem with Shuichi. Keep up the good work, Ryo too. Toji. Shall I fill them in on situation Arthur? Mm. In that case, listen up everyone! This will be the summer's plan of action. Part two. Ryo and Hanuman, you will continue your surveillance of Shibuya Award. The same goes for Toji and Tadatomo regarding the Nato Award. It's essential that each group of two acts as a cohesive unit. In the event of a hiccup, you are to disengage and retreat at once. Report any findings to Snow on me. We will continue to coordinate from HQ. Here in Ikebuku are underground, and we will relay new information to the others. Meanwhile, I'd like reconnaissance in the Ikebukuro Shinjuku area to be handled by Kengo and Arthen. Even if you forget everything else you have said, please remember this. You are not to engage with any of the three true guilds. A fight is to be avoided at all costs at this stage, but any <laughs> under any but the most desperate of circumstances. Got that? Uh, why do you always treat us like rickets? Come on! You know you can trust me and my partner to stay out of trouble? Aye, boy. And then it just keeps cool. Head can go. So, to, uh, yeah, summarize from the previous uh, chapter um, other than invading, or rather, sneaking into the Penitentiary Academy and uh, trying to break free of uh, Mononobe, which, you know, turns out not to be so successful, we also indirectly managed to. Uh, find yourselves a uh, having caused the the fallout between the treaties between the three true guilds due to a uh, Valor and uh, Tuscali Poka's interventions with their plan to just <laughs> cause uh, a war or something. I, I forgot their intentions, but it's essentially something like that—a conflict of interests. For the time being, our priority is to gather information. Such intelligence will be crucial in the days to come. Exactly. So to recap. Ryoten, Hanuman, and Shibuya, Toji and Tadatomo and Minato, and Toshiba and Shijuku, Kengo and Arthen. Kengo and me, huh? Under normal circumstances, splitting up would be the height of folly. But we have not been included in this war after all. We must use this fact to our advantage, and enables us to move freely and gather intelligence with which to arm ourselves. As for the Eastern Rule Makers, Southern Invaders, and the Western Warmongers, it would appear that the three true have no intention of waging this war from the position of the two base portals. Well, naturally, they seek to minimize damage in their own territories by taking the fight elsewhere. They have walled off Toshima and Shinjuku in order to direct the battle there, just as the genocide is with the six words they once controlled. Hmm. Walled off Toshima and Shinjuku. I see. So the battle's gonna happen where we are right now. West and East are likely to clash here in Ikebukuro. Furthermore, I believe South and West will confront each other in Kabukicho. It stands to reason that we should pay close attention to any developments between East and South as well. Thank you, Snow. Your reasoning is sound. Now as for our goal, Ariton. Our highest priority objective is teaming up 
So yeah, Mr. Monroe will be back. Right, Jiro? Right you are. We are going to rescue Mr. Mononobe. First, however, we need to gather necessary information. So, get to it! You got it! Oh, that's such a good shot! That's such a good shot! I love it! <sighs> Everyone to rest after that speech. Shall I make you some milk tea? Directly from the source? Thanks, Snow. Take off your jacket right now. But first, I'd like to hear the rest of what you were telling me earlier. Of course. It would be my pleasure, Ciro. You will want to hear this as well, Arthur. I believe you were discussing the one called Mahakala, who claimed to be the world representative of Divaloka. According to Arthur, this Mahakala spoke of a longing for the destruction of all things. Is that correct? Yes. That's what he told me. Right, Arthur? Mm. Of course. I do not doubt that you are told us, Arthur. However, I happen to find this claim extremely peculiar. In fact, to avoid any misunderstanding, I ought to say that it is impossible. What? Do you know something about, about Mahakala? Mahakala, all destroyer of the worlds of Divaloka. I am aware of this information. That said, I also know of another meaning behind that name. In the world called Shangri-La, from which both Malkan and I originate, it is the name of the All Protector. Uh, all Destroyer and All Protector in one? Wait, so you're from Shangri-La? Would that imply that there are two different transients by the name of Mahakala from two different worlds? Hmm, I do not believe so. I have not once heard of a two transients here in this Tokyo bearing the same name. Yeah, that wouldn't be allowed. They certainly exist in mythology, but in, according to the rules of the game, it seems that uh, things that are similar cannot like coexist at the same time. As it is, the rules and rules applied through the app are aligned up to unique names. Interesting. Which means that this Mahakala must exist in both Divaloka and Shangri-La, and yet... It is impossible for a belief in both of these identities to coexist. Therefore, the worlds are sure to have separated them. Hmm. In other words... I'm will unwilling to divulge any of my suppositions at this time. It is too dangerous to operate on guesswork. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what he was trying to say, but... Like, you can make a lot of guesses of what the consequence of, uh, you know, a single name happening to be. Like, it could be, like, they have merged together or something, but <laughs> we've never really seen anything quite like that. However, my instincts tell me that the answer to the mystery of Mahakala's dual identities can be found. Yes. It can be found at the root of the war threatening the horizon, yet cloaked in churning darkness. Oh, looks like we're being introduced to a whole bunch of new characters at once. <sighs> the Senate has kindly agreed to heed our requests. Preparations for the war are complete. Hidden behind a mask, the speaker addresses the other leaders among the warmongers with marked respect, finishing the statement. <laughs> it is time for the strategy meeting to begin, my fellows. We once again find ourselves in a time of war. The War of Worlds is imminent. We shall witness an incredible war in which myth is pitted against myth. This time around, the gods to the east and south appear to be marching on us for breaking the pact. Most likely, it will come down to a two-pronged assault. I say as if I have any stake in, in all of this. However, as I've already completed the task of inciting this war, I now humbly hand the reins over to the rest of you. From this point forth, it is my lot to simply watch over you from this base as you dash madly into the fray. Indeed, Representative Gain, so it is my humble self to one such as I. A battle is over the moment it has begun. So it is, Representative of the Land of War. In that case, you and I shall remain here to hold down the fort. Hmm. Oh, must you leave us so soon, Shiva? Our enemy approaches. 
I'll go to the front lines and fight them. This is all the strategy we need. Amazing. So many people whose voices I don't know. <laughs> oh, oh dear. <laughs> Please forgive me. Had I heard another speak those words, I would have thought them overconfident. Yet. From your lips, Shiva, they are fact. You are, after all, the representative of Divaloka, the destroyer of space itself. Do not make me repeat myself, Representative Gaina. I do not claim to tell of the world representative. I am here only for the purpose of bettering myself as monk in training, and that is all I wish for. You you to acknowledge me as such. <laughs> my apologies. I'm afraid cramming my foot into my mouth has been a bad habit of mine all my life. Well, Shiva, let me be content to act as our mobile agent in Ikabukuro. Or one prong of the attack will take place. I would be delighted. This will be greatly beneficial to my training. This is like the last Warmonger's chapter, right? And then the next one is Invaders. That's what just came out. Does that mean the Warmongers are going to be defeated in this chapter? Or, or somehow they're going to be made irrelevant, much less irrelevant after this. wonder how. Hey now! Cut the side of things for yourself! I must be the one to defeat Corpcro from the East, aka the Might. A voice actor of the same type, but with a completely different artist. I could not plan on handing off all the carnage and the equal Bukuro to Shiva. I'm aware of your wishes as well. I would like for you to accompany Shiva in the direction of Toshima Ward. Uh, being Ikebukuro. Irrespective of my previous statements, I would not do to have Shiva act entirely alone. After all, the entire point of the battle being staged in this Tokyo by its representatives is the attainment of a single prize. And Shiva, I'm afraid, is the kind of ally who would not hesitate for an instant to destroy this trophy the moment it appears. Hmm. Ooh. This music. Hmm. Naturally, after what he did to me, he cannot be forgiven. The transient known as Shiva stares off to the distance, eyes burning with emotions too volatile to conceal. What's more, his far off glare is unmistakably directed towards Ikabukuro. Tita and Yoritomo and Marduk, along with Shusumu, or whatever his name is, and, uh, uh, <laughs> too fast. She even in Mephistopheles. There you go. Mushusu. Mushushu. Mushushu, that is. Chapter 11. Warmongers. The Moon at War. Individual Resolve 2. 2. Alright then, Tanajomo Keno Inusuka, Yasuori Kobungo Inuta, are you there? O oh, noble source representative of the land of Wa, Tanajomo Keno Inusaka is ever at your service. Appearing without the faintest sound of footfalls, Tanajomo Keno Inusaka responds to the men, bowing from the neck. Well met, my dear counselor. Hmm. And where might your other half be? I beg of your forgiveness. Sergeant Yasuori Kobungu Inuta appears to have flown the coop, so to speak. St shucking your authority. Oh, is that so? The voices of both parties remain steady throughout their exchange, displaying no weakness. Going forward, I shall endeavor to make up for Yasuori's absence. In fact, I vow to exceed our combined capabilities. In light of this, I beg your benevolent mercy, O noble source. Ah, uh, you need not lean so heavily on formality in my presence, Counselor Tanatomo. The two of you were inseparable, were you not? I'm sure it must have been agonizing for you to lose the other half of your soul. I, too, have fond memories of our compatriot. He was an unparalleled fighter, a fighting force, a hero without equal, and... To you, Tanatomo, an irreplaceable individual. I... 
as you say. Sergeant Yasuyori Kobungu Inuta, gone. As I recall, he cut a rather large figure. Should you require a plate or replacement primer, you may have your pick of my soldiers. Take as many as you need. As you say, I am ever put to shame by your constant benevolence, my lord. I have given you my word as Tanatomo Kano Inusaka, as one of the legendary eight dog warriors of the land of Wa. Do not forget your duty to our homeland. You are the sword of the land of Wa, the one destined to destroy our national enemy. Know that I am relying heavily on you. I hope that you'll prove yourself irreplaceable to me. In response to these words, Tanantoma simply bows again, displaying impeccable obedience. For being possessed of exceptional wisdom, Tanatoma is aware that there is no acceptable response. No other response. Uh, Tanatoma knows all too well that to act outside of Yoritoma's requirements is to be cut down and cast aside. Very well. And that is the fun of action the summoners shall take. Thank you, Shiro. Arthur. To confirm, your goal is to rescue Mr. Monobi for Oh she just go caught me, yes. Correct. I hope that as their allies, the Zerk Zerkos will be willing to act in accordance with their motives. In order to fulfill our goals, we will have no choice but to fight. However, such battles are only the means to our end. Though we may see the three true guilds as our enemies at present. It may not always be so. It is less important to focus on who is an enemy or an ally than on what we mean to achieve. Well said. In this way, I believe we will be able to attain what we seek. At least, that's the plan. Right, Arthur? <laughs> not vaguely. I see. I suppose that is only to be expected. After all, that's exactly how the summers have scraped by so far. That it is, no. In fact, I seem to recall hearing something of the like from a fellow student of our school. Now, before we go in, I hope you'll listen to a word of warning from someone with a bit more experience. In the battles to come, that inflexibility will be your downfall. Surely, you cannot be telling us to allow villain to go unchallenged. Not at all. What I mean is that by partitioning the world into what is comprehensible and what is wrong, you have already lost. After all, that is how wars are begun. If you draw a line in the sand, someone will eventually cross it, and conflict will spark. But war is our enemy's domain, and we can't hope to fight them in, on their own terms. They are called the warmongers for a reason. I see. If you dismiss ideas as unacceptable or incomprehensible, you will never be able to move forward. And once everything is clearly delineated, the powerless are helpless against the powerful. The strong defeat the weak. Might makes right. The end. Hmm, so what do you do if you can't defeat your enemy on their terms? You drag them into your own game and make them play by your rules. Only then will you have a chance at victory. Just a tip from a jaded third year. I'd appreciate it if you kept that in mind. Are you two ready cut up to the surface? I'll direct you from here while you gather information. Please do everything you can to avoid conflict out there. Uh, no probs. It's not like all I ever do is go around mindlessly getting to fights, you know. Trust me. I learned my lesson that time in Kabukicho when we got our butts handed to us by the locals for picking up the wrong fight. Seriously, Kangaroo, no fighting. Acknowledged. I'll be providing navigational and com communication support from the base. Alright, off we go. Let's do this! Hmm. <laughs> All that take about fighting not being the aim, and yet look how valiantly our future bridegroom charges off. Oh, this is Claude. Still, the Summoner's Council was quite enlightening. Perhaps there is something to be learned with respect to our own guild. 
Oh, a voice I would know anywhere, and I'm glad I am to hear it. It appears you have been busy in our absence, no? Fear not, your master has returned. Welcome home, my darling master. I shall prepare your milk tea right away. You may do so as you fill us in. I wish to hear what information you have gleaned. Of course. Ha ha ha! Your face is an open book, and that book is a tragedy. Is a warmonger's of military strength so formidable? Uh, I'm afraid it is, Master Claude. It would seem that their forces are as inexhaustible as the waves of the ocean itself. Hmm. Go on. Our guild, the Berserkers, specializes in battling, whether that be one-on-one -on -one or in battle royale. However, up against odds of 100 or 1,000 to 1, we would naturally be at a disadvantage. Perhaps, but there is no such thing as inexhaustibility or true infinity. One cannot create something from nothing. You will find that behind there might exist a set of beliefs that display the illusion of infinite numbers. It's not, uh, Snow nods mutely, his eyes gleaming with respect for his master. Malakala, a name you are guaranteed to stumble across if you delve deep enough into the warmonger's background. Yet, we know nothing next, next to nothing about them. Not their form, role, or rule, nor any specific details about their nature. For a while there have been rumors that Mahakala is a being of great darkness who treats other transients as lesser things, wielding cruelty and violence against them. There are also those who testify that this is untrue and describe Mahakala as a wise and gentle being from unprecedented compassion. So these are the two conflicting mythologies taking place among uh, rumors right now. Snow. Earlier you said that Mahakala is a being whose name points to two separate worlds. Yes, Master Claude, that is correct. We can see that is one way of wording it. We, however, have a different view. And what might that be? It is possible that the one those schemers call Mahakala is, in fact, merely another schemer. Another system. Hmm. A system possessing multiple rules and multiple rules that was established here in this Tokyo. Systems are comprised of multiple components that, when viewed in their entirety, can take on the aspect of an immense and complex darkness. We are one who intends to dismantle such structures, therefore, considering the summoner's strategy. Let us apply our guild specialty by employing, as you put it, one-on-one -on -one battles. We propose we take apart battles of a thousand on one, so tilted against us, and convert them into one thousand one on one battles, to even the odds. For that is how the Berserkers can claim victories. Interesting. Well, wonder how he's going to accomplish it. That's the real question. We have gained a great deal from the battles fought at Penitentia Academy. Tezcatli Poker's network has gone silent, leaving a hole in the Warmonger's intelligence channels for us to exploit. It would seem that someone has inherited this network and is continuing to run it even now. I see. So Break actually has the information then. This has allowed us to glean value insight into the warmongers, who previously existed with an information blackout. Oh, is Break cooperating with us? However... We were able to obtain only a handful of names, and it took everything we could throw at them by combining the best of our allied guilds. Oh ho! Ikaku. First, we have one in charge of recruitment for the warmongers, the underground auctioneer who frequents the black market. Ms. Mistopheles and Yuritomu. Then there is the secretarial aide to the Shadow Cabinet, the world representative of Gehenna. Even more infamous, it in rumor is the world representative of the Land Voa, a member of the secret student government here in Tokyo. Shiba. And last, but certainly not least, you have the world representative of Divinoka, who we must conclude has some connection with Mahakala. Uh, Mephistopheles and Tita. Did I say? No, that's Marduk. We have been gathering until on the other suit who number among the ranks. This battle will be waged upon a solid understanding of ally and enemy alike. 
For the time being, we have prepared an arena befitting those uh, three elite berserkers who were recently liberated from their imprisonment. Don't tell me because he's going to show up. <laughs> so that's where Kasuga was. Oh, no. It's Pollux. Engrave my name of Pollux unto thee. Shine bright, starlight, scatter the darkness. And body, and the body shop. Oh boy, you are a sacred artifact, sure as handy, Polly. Sure is, Nathan. This star shining above my head can create light within the deepest darkness. Anyway, this is where we split up, you two. Good luck out there. Don't go get caught by the enemy. Eh, whatever. All I've got to do is follow the coin trail from the black market easy until I've got from Claude. Uh, never thought the day would have come that I'd be sold as merchandise, though. That on the Greer Auctioneer is gonna pay for this. Mm, then I'll follow your example and pay a little visit to an old acquaintance. <laughs> Who would have thought that someone like that then appear in Tokyo on behalf of the Lightbringer, huh? At least, that's what he says he's doing here. As a confident of our overlord, I've got a few questions I'd like to ask that slippery light hater, Mephistopheles. Now then, we wish to know the status of the other gladiators, particularly in regards to the rankers from Ikabukuro. Even if your information is not complete, we expect you to tell us everything you know, Snow. Of course, the majority of our guild's gladiators remain in the hands of the three true guilds. I am in the process of seeking information regarding all of our key members, beginning with Taurus Mask. By sincere support, oh, they still haven't found him? Oh yeah, I guess he was shipped off with a, a Varga uh, on front lines with Belor. My sincerest apologies, but I humbly beg for a little more time to complete my findings. Very well. Continue your investigation to the whereabouts of those who are missing. We await your report. Of course, Master Claude, as you wish. I will endeavor to bring you good news, and soon. In the meantime, we shall work on preparing the stage for the grand battle our berserker gladiators have longed for. Our first stop will be the political center known as the Senate. It seems that our own personal battle is destined to take place there. Before we leave, however, we would like to unleash the card our guild has been holding in reserve. After all, there is little fun to be found in allowing those three true guilds to beat us up to the, the punch at every turn. And it's time for the Yukubuku ranker dubbed the Lone Star to make his debut. <laughs> okay, so this is What? But, Master Claude, are you sure? Individual Resolve 3 Two districts, Ikabuku and Toshima Ward, and Kabukicho in Shinjuku, have been designated as the battlegrounds for the clash of the three true guilds. What's more, these districts are now cut off from the rest of the city by imposing walls, isolating them for the coming battle. Uh, what's with the sudden evacuation orders? Was there an accident or something? Like fire? Or a live bomb? Whoa! Stop pushing, will you? The enforcement agencies controlled by the legislative, executive, and judicial brands of government have been dispatched by the three true guilds. They operate under the rule of law to forcibly evacuate all citizens living in the two districts. Eventually, after the evacuation is complete, the clamor of a brutal battle can be heard raging behind the walls. Ikabukuro has been completely transformed by its isolation from the outside world. It is now a gruesome field of combat. So we're makers versus the warmongers. The scope of it is incomparable to the previous skirmishes. Thousands of soldiers come together to partake in the bloodshed. So this is where things fall apart, like in the previous uh, memories that we saw. Where uh, somehow there's a leap between the peacetime and all of a sudden conflict everywhere. This is the beginning of it. However, the warriors presently deployed are all aware that they are little more than the opening act. This, after all, is the battlefield where those wielding the most powerful rules of all the worlds will be pitted against one another in a legendary clash of mythologies. 
How do you like that? I'm the first one here. No surprise there. I made it to lead the, the charge on the enemy lines. That the bell, y'all? Here it comes! Solar Prayer! The youth knocks an arrow, draws and fires. It flies as straight and true as a ray of light, before hitting the concrete with a magmatic blast, melting it like taffy and eviscerating everything in its path. In the blink of an eye, the landscape of the entire district is irreversibly altered. Let them come, be it Korpakar, Amaterasu, or any other foe. I will crush them all! Hmm. So it has begun. What tremendous power. To think that this is the strength of but one of the Mormongers' world rep representatives. Tida, the Lord of the Sun, from the world of Nira Kanai. Even alone, he can bring down thousands of enemy soldiers. One by one, every turn. Because that is his gimmick. As a long range shot, blur unit. The ferocious light produces by, produced by Tita's bow seems to contain within it the burning blaze of the sun itself. Naturally, the other six representatives also wield rules of sufficient odds just by their appointments. So this is Shinya. Feature of the Valentine event. Rules with all sorts of powers, such as the world in the shrouding flames, violent blizzards, and the very might of the sun. Come to think of it, some of the most powerful representatives are those whose rules aligned with the sun. It only makes sense. In terms of world hierarchy, the sun is, of course, placed above all else. That is Shinya. I know it well. Whenever I see such shining light, I'm reminded of the sun in my homeworld. Tower of Mighty. What means does an ordinary citizen have to combat the light of the very sun that shines upon the earth, or the flames that rage across the plains, or the driving snow that blankets the soil? Such powers belong to those who tower over the worlds from uh, the very pinnacle of might, unfathomable to mere mortals. Lesser beings can do nothing but shiver in awe as they pass by, and fervently pray that they do not catch their interest. Mm. Come on, Tower Mighty. We have a job to do. Mm. South of Ikabukuro lies the other designated battleground, Kabukicho, Shinjuku. So this is where the outlaws previously were based. The warmongers of the west are there in force uh, to repel the invaders of the south. Just as I suspected. How brazen of you to show your face before me, Temujin. Hmm. A lone transient strides forth with a confident grin, clearly undaunted by the vast numbers standing in opposition. <laughs> Long time no see, Marduk. I knew I'd find the warmonger's calf of the sun here. Today, at long last, I shall fit my bow against yours and prove myself the better marksman. You cannot tell me you came alone. Where are the rest of your troops cowering? Good question, but I wouldn't have thought you'd need to ask. Can't you just flush them out with the proud light of your sun? Anyway, taking down rulers of the sun is my forte. Come, dash into my waiting jaws, dear Marduk. Very well, Temujin. As a warrior of the sun, it is in my nature to dive headfirst into traps and tear them apart from the inside. Witness for yourself how I have been reincarnated. Join me, Mushusu! It's time for Vor. Eh? Whoa, hey! Check it out, Ibaraki. The light's out and they're so bright that not even the blinds can stop it. To hell with this. I don't care if they're warmongers or invaders or whatever. We can't let them wreck up our Kabuchicho. Having slipped through the cracks of the evacuation order, the core members of the outlaws keep tabs on the situation from within one of the buildings they own. I hate this just as much as you, but I'd rather not raise my hand against power like that and come with charred fur. You know better than to take on the authorities. People of our... Profession. I have to keep cool heads at times like this. Uh, you're right. Thank you, Yobu. It's just... Do we really have no choice but to give up on Kabukicho? Damn it! Destiny can be so cruel sometimes. 
I swore I'd make Kabukicho my forever home, and I was just gonna end up like all the rest. Ah, hell. Tetsuya watches through the apps as portal after portal is stolen from the outlaws. The grinding of his teeth gives voice to his frustration. The same bitter expression lines every face as the outlaws are left with nothing to do but watch their beloved town get raised and plundered before their very eyes. Settle down, will ya? You're too young to be getting your blood pressure up so high. It's times like this when you have no other option that you sit your butt down and conserve your strength. Make time itself your ally. That's the key to the situation, because every sun will burn out eventually, eh? Oh yeah, I forgot that uh, Daikaku can make clones of stuff. Or shadows of stuff. Hmm. Within a stone's throw of Kabukicho sits the police station. There, in the superintendent's office, sits the head of the force. However, despite being the chief of police, Superintendent Daikaku is in the middle of throwing oil on the first on the fire rather than lift a finger to stop the battle raging on his streets. Mm. Must be hard for those brats who had their hands on Shinjuku and Kibukuro to watch the territory get gobbled up. As he deploys his forces, Daikaku reminisces. There was a time when he, too, had been powerless to resist as his own home world was ripped from his grasp. He recalls the shame of bending the knee to the son of Takamagahara, of being forced to relinquish the overworld and take command of the underworld in his stead. He recalls the rivers of blood that stained the many clouds pink like sunrise. He sifts through the memories of the shadow he carries within him and a multitude of grudges. He had vowed to himself never to repeat that experience. Never again would he allow what was his to be taken from him. That was why he had done everything he could to amass wealth and power in this Tokyo, dipping his hand in any and every pot he could, no matter how shady. Ah, uh, that won't do. Now I'll have to change my gloves. Having fisted his hands so tightly that his white gloves turned black, Daikaku swiftly tugs on a fresh pair. As he does, a thought occurs to him. He only great this opportunity for vengeance because of the great black one, Mahakala. None other than the singular vast and fathomless system which rides in the depths of this Tokyo, the city in which the rules of 23 worlds collide. When the great darkness reveals itself, Tokyo will plunge into a deep and impenetrable darkness, devoid of all light. And I am fine with that. In fact, I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> the only thing that neither the sun nor the moon can withstand is time. Eventually, they will both fall to their doom. Of course, if the moon falls, the sun will rise. This is the one thing Daikaku cannot permit. For he has long since resolved to put the stop to anything that forces him to face his unfortunate past. Oh, profound darkness, great Mahakala, I swear to sacrifice all of it into your name. Mahakala, in the tongue of another world, this name translates to one beyond time. If that loathsome sun cannot be rent permanently from the sky, to sink eternally into the depths of the underworld. Then the dark and heavy grudge that resides within Daikaku can never be absolved. Before long, the first night steals over the battle, and as it does, the clamor of war stops abruptly as it began. Mm -hmm. uh, huh? Sounds like it stopped. I guess even that lots of during the guild's battle curfew. For now. Oh yeah, the battle curfew. Um. I, I, I remember that the curfew for gilding and like all that uh, happened after school, hence the name of this game. But I, I forgot that it ended that night, honestly. Oh well, their friends are still strutting about down there, like they own the place or something. Alright, so even though they can't battle anymore, they can still inspect, supervise, scout. Still, at least those world reps are given a rest. Pack of monsters, a lot of them. Anyway, I met any merry outlaws. I trust you're all rested up, as instructed. As one, the outlaws nod in response to Yobu's words. It is a cardinal rule of the game that ownership of portals does not transfer through battles held after dark. 
In other words, once the after school period has ended and the city is steeped in the cloak of night, portals can no longer change hands. Therefore, guilds who rely on forests tend to stand down at night. Interesting. Unfortunately, our treasured weapon is no good during the day, and there's nothing we can do about that. Uh, how long have, how, we have waited for this moment? The Queen of Kabuki Show is finally poised to rise, it seems. It's Ali. Is the treasured weapon he's referring to Tsukiyomi? I guess so, because he's like usually asleep during the day or something. Actually, that doesn't make any sense. I have no idea who he's referring to by that. And about time to, useless as you are in any of the normal Guild Wars. I'm expecting you to put a gun on a good show for our sake, Sally. Mm -hmm. Morning, Suzuka. Or should I say, evening. What time is it anyway? The sleepy-looking high school girl is, in fact, the one they call the Queen of Kabukicho. She is the outlaw's guildmaster. She is the most famous among all dark creatures who haunt Tokyo. Just a regular local girl who became a nightwalker, a vampire. Eyes on the front, one. This should be fine.